you know, when 5, 10, maybe 20 years from now, you recollect on fantastic games that you saw on television, or if you were at Boom Pickens Stadium the night of November 4th, 2017, um, games that you've seen, one game you're probably never going to forget, the game that you just saw. The Sooners and the Cowboys combining for a ridiculous 114 points, almost 1,450 yards of offense, and both quarterbacks, Mason Rudolph and Baker Mayfield, putting it on the line, each with five touchdowns apiece, Rudolph with over 400 yards passing in a losing cause, and Baker Mayfield just might have solidified the Heisman Trophy in Stillwater on Saturday night with 598 yards through the air, which was an OU single-game record, breaking Landry Jones' mark. And we saw Hollywood, that's right, Marquise Brown, at times looked like Usain Bolt in the open field, especially on crossing patterns, because once he got in the open field, Cowboys secondary didn't have a chance catching him. A huge night for Marquise Brown, 265 yards receiving, contributions from Mark Andrews, from C.D. Lamb late in the game. And then the running game looked good at first. Large part of the second half couldn't do much because of Oklahoma State adjustments. But in the fourth quarter, the running game picked up when it needed to the most, including the clinching touchdown by Trey Sermon to make it 62-52. to And Rodney Anderson had over 100 yards rushing. The Sooners overcame a shaky start in the game with Baker Mayfield throwing an interception on third play from scrimmage and getting some breaks in the game, too. Justice Hill had a touchdown run called back. First play from scrimmage for the Cowboys because of a holding penalty. And then the Abdul Adams play, second possession with OU in shitty field position. Adams looked like he coughed it up. Oklahoma State looked like they picked it up and ran for a touchdown and briefly had a 10 to nothing lead. Thankfully, Sooner fans get a reprieve when the play is ruled dead, thus nullifying the touchdown and the Sooners put out of trouble and then the next sooner possession, they would score. Moments like that in the game, you're thinking, my goodness, if it, if it, if it goes against OU at that particular stage, you're down 10 nothing. Who knows what the course of the game plays out. Maybe they come from behind. Maybe they eventually get the lead and just barely hold on. Or maybe that 10 nothing lead is what Oklahoma State needs to springboard their way toward a Bedlam victory. We'll never know because those were plays. Those were big moments in the game. That helped the Sooners. But the Sooners also at times made things happen on their own thanks to the offense and the productivity of Baker Mayfield coming through in the clutch with his powerful arm. And again, the combination of Mayfield to Hollywood Marquise Brown was one of the big difference makers in the contest. 62-52, the Sooners win one of the craziest games I've ever seen in my entire life and by far the craziest bedlam. And I was at the 1988 game at that time, Lewis Field which at that time looked like a large high school field and instead of the fantastic spectacle it is now of Team Boone Pickens. And that was a game where Mike Gaddis and Barry Sanders both rushed for over 200 yards and the Sooners won 31-28. And Oklahoma State, the end should have won, but Brent Parker dropped the game-winning touchdown pass with under a minute to go. This game had a lot of that similar drama. It had an electric atmosphere. And one of the big reasons why I changed my mind this week on my weekly matchup show of picking Oklahoma, because you might remember on my on my Oklahoma preview, I said they would go 10-2, and two, and one of the two losses would be against Oklahoma State. But seeing how the Sooners won in Columbus in front of over 100,000 fans of the Horseshoe, I said to myself, if Oklahoma can win in Columbus, they can win anywhere. And if the Sooners were going to lose this game on Saturday, it wasn't going to be because of the fan base. It wasn't going to be because of the environment. That wasn't going to intimidate them. If they lost on Saturday, it was, it was going to be because the Cowboys made a few more plays and they were the better team. The Sooners show tonight that they were just a little bit better and that they've been a little bit more battle-tested in the past, especially Baker Mayfield. Still, he's never lost a game on the road in a true road game. And, by the way, perfect 3-0 in Bedlam, including 2-0 in Stillwater Lifetime as a starting QB. Impressive stuff. Like I said, I think the Heisman Trophy is now his. Penn State loses again. Saquon Barkley, not one of his better games. And... You look at Ohio State, and he thought about JT Barrett. No, Iowa waxed him today. So by process of elimination, right now it looks like, barring a collapse, the Sooners will not only play in the Big 12 title game, but it looks like Baker Mayfield is going to walk away with the Stiff Arm Trophy. And he's already one of the most popular players in the history of Oklahoma football and a program that has seen so many um, big-time players and big-time personalities in Baker Mayfield. If he's not at the top of the list, he better be number two or three on your list. Otherwise, your list isn't valid. But as terrific as the offense looked tonight, 
the defense reminded you of that Texas Tech game from last year or the first quarter of the Texas Tech game this year. Pathetic. Having guys running wide open. And, and you remember at the beginning of the year we said, you know, Jordan Thomas, this would be his final year, and then next year we're going to send him off to the NFL. He's going to be a high draft pick. Unless you know something I don't know, the only way Jordan Thomas will have any affiliation with the NFL will be as a season ticket holder, not as a player. This guy is not NFL ready, and it was obvious that they, meaning Oklahoma State's offense, your six, they were going to attack number seven. Marshall Aitman absolutely ate Thomas's lunch. And I know that you know Mike Stoops made an adjustment. We saw the true freshman, Trey Norwood, and Norwood didn't have much more success. But remember, Trey Norwood's just a true freshman. Jordan Thomas isn't. He's a veteran and just absolutely getting picked on like Roy Clark picks a freaking guitar during, you know, picking and grinning on hee-haw. It looked like, you know, Jordan Thomas, no matter where he lined up, Oklahoma State knew where he was at, and Rudolph went right at him. I mean, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> but it wasn't just Jordan Thomas. It was just wide open running lanes for, you know, for Justice Hill. I mean, we know that Oklahoma State has a quality backup in J.D. King. King didn't even get one rushing touch tonight. His only play was on a receiving catch. They didn't need J.D. King. It was... It was the play of Justice Hill. And Hill was absolutely slippery than butter. OU at times caught out of position trying to make a tackle. At times just whiffing. It was a bad night trying to contain Oklahoma State's run. It was a bad night in trying to get pressure on Mason Rudolph until the very end of the game when we finally saw Obo get to the quarterback. When we finally saw, on one occasion, we saw uh, the outside presence of the uh, sophomore product um, able to get in there, uh, Ward. But other than that, Mason Rudolph had too much time to throw. Too much time to dissect Oklahoma secondary, especially at the corners. Even Pardell Motley had a hard time making containment. It was an awful night for Mike Stoops' defense, except in the very end when they had to come up with the stops. And by the way, something needs to be done about the targeting rule. Okay, Yes, Will Johnson... His helmet collided with another player's helmet, okay, from Oklahoma State. If your intention is to target, yes, you deserve to be ejected. But in a three-point ball game near midfield in the fourth quarter, do you really think Will Johnson is intending on targeting somebody? I know the helmets collided, but when you don't intend to collide with another player's helmet, you make contact. You know what that's called? F double O T B A double L football. They need to modify this rule. They need to change it or something because it was very obvious that Will Johnson could not stop in midair, go back to where he jumped from, or if he is, you know, if his momentum does take him to the intended receiver, it's not like Will Johnson says, okay, I better not hit the guy in the helmet. I just better duck. And you know what? I might get hurt when my head hits the turf. I mean, is that what we're going to have to teach players to do now? when they're in midair trying to make a play, not target somebody, now Will Johnson has to miss the first half of next week's pivotal game against TCU. If the intention of the target is to make a collision, but you're doing it in a way to hurt or in a way that's not football-related, yeah, you should be kicked out of the game. Will Johnson was trying to make a play, and when you're traveling at a high rate of speed in midair, you can't stop, okay? And if another helmet happens to be in your way and you collide, what are you supposed to do? Again, sometimes we get a little too um, sissy-like when it comes to trying to protect players, okay? Protecting players is one thing, but taking the integrity out of the game, that's what happened in the case of Will Johnson. So I thought that was horrible. Otherwise, I thought... A lot of the calls were fair. Uh, there was a play where it looked like Marquise Brown might have caught the ball. It got reversed because he didn't have control. That's fine. Might remember another play, too, where Aitman on the fourth down um, had his uh, had one foot in bounds when initially it was called out of bounds. I didn't have a problem with that either. That's fine. I would say the same thing if OSU had won the game. But, again, the targeting thing, it's absolutely bullshit. So the Sooners in the second half, um, I give them credit for – holding OSU scoreless, and for only holding Oklahoma State to 14 points in that second half. But the first half, I'm sorry, if you have 38 points on the board in the first half, that should be enough to be in control of the game, only to look that the other team has 38 points as well. 
Something about the Sooner defense has to be done. Otherwise, TCU is going to break their hearts next week. West Virginia will otherwise, or it's going to happen in the Big 12 title game, and it's going to prevent them from getting to the college football playoff. I'm happy the Sooners won. I'm glad the offense showed up, but the defense still has deficiencies, get, getting gouts for huge plays, especially through the air, letting receivers get past them. It's ridiculous, and everybody on the defense is to blame for it, not just Jordan Thomas, but Thomas, again, got picked on a lot, and of course, so did Trey Norwood, his backup, but Norwood, he's a true freshman, got thrown to the fire against the best receiving core in college football, and by the way, if you're looking at this from the Oklahoma State side to close us out, you know, the Cowboys, no question, had opportunities starting in the beginning when it looked like they could get that touchdown, but again, they got called back, they couldn't... Um, capitalized either off a critical third quarter drive. They got a first and goal at the four. Their ground game had been working for them. They decided to throw it to the back of the end zone. And Robert Barnes, you know, another one of those freshmen that saw playing time tonight, makes the interception, getting the Sooners out of trouble. And then I think the final meaningful drive of the game when it was still a three-point margin, we don't see Justice Hill out on the field. Very obvious at that point that the Cowboys are going to be throwing. And so the Sooner coverage adjusts. And the Sooners come up with the stop when it was 55-52 OU. So you take a victory anytime, especially in a robbery like this. But the Sooners next Saturday night know that they've got to step their game up because TCU's offense is not shabby. And by the way, their defense is a hell of a lot better than what we saw tonight with the Cowboys. As for Oklahoma State, um, obviously national championship hopes, as Mr. Miyagi would say, squash like grape. And Big 12 title game, they'd have to run the table and get some help. But now they've got losses to TCU and to Oklahoma, so they could be shit out of luck when it comes to the tiebreaker. As for Oklahoma, the dream for the Big 12 championship game, they're in control of it right now. And as far as the college football playoff goes, we'll see how it works out. They can go 12-1. and one. you got to like their chances. But what kind of hurt today was two things. Number one, Iowa State losing to West Virginia. Because now Iowa State's not going to be in the top 15 anymore. So that loss against the Cyclones in early October, yeah, that um, that loss is you know is, is not going to be as forgiving as it was entering today. And then you look at Ohio State, your biggest win as far as ranked opponents. Ohio State got the crap kicked out of them by the Hawkeyes. You might have seen my my three pick show. You know I picked Iowa to cover that 18 point spread. I had no idea the Hawkeyes were going to win, and I definitely had no idea that the Hawkeyes would absolutely beat the bejesus out of the Buckeyes, but that's exactly what happened. So that win against Ohio State is going to get downgraded a little bit. you got to hope, ladies and gentlemen, that Miami beats Notre Dame next week. Notre Dame has to be out of the picture. They go 11-1, I have a feeling the Irish are going to get into the playoff because their only loss would have been to Georgia. So you got to hope that Miami beats Notre Dame, and you got to um, hope that happens. Um, if that happens, then Miami Clemson, when they play in the ACC title game, uh, the loser of that game will be out. So, But Notre Dame has to be out of the equation. They just keep on rolling. Great job by Brian Kelly and his fighting Irish. They've been playing terrific football. And you got to hope that only one SEC team makes it to the college football playoff because both Georgia and Bama right now are undefeated top two teams in the country. But the Sears know one thing. They're still pretty much in the hunt thanks to an exciting and at times – uh, victory that created the A in anxiety. But they get the job done, 62-52, to 52, winning in a difficult place in Stillwater against a very worthy opponent in Oklahoma State. Two defenses that looked, for the most part, like they were out to lunch. But thankfully, uh, lunchtime ended in the fourth quarter for the Sooners, and they were able to step up and prevent the Cowboys from the game-winning score and then add another score, which could be helpful in Big 12 tiebreakers down the road. Got to get ready for TCU, but the Sooners – Remain viable, both Big 12-wise and the college football playoff. Big game by Baker. Big game by Hollywood. Oklahoma continuing their dominance over little brother in Bedlam. Boomer Sooner.